So we're here with Michael, who took a series of photos in the days after September 11th. He captured a street-level view of downtown Manhattan. Michael, uh, why don't you get us started? Yeah, we were driving into Manhattan, and you could see the skyline as you drove over the bridge and some planes in the sky still, but the towers were missing. And uh, as you got into Manhattan from Penn Station, you could see the flags were at half staff. And, and now you're actually walking to Ground Zero. Right. From Penn Station, um, there were people selling flags on the street and uh, missing posters all over the place, uh, reminding you what had happened. Now, I mean, so much visual stimuli. Um, how did you just keep it straight? Yeah, you know, it was hard to process. Even from the, the streets of the city being empty, uh, was hard to process because usually there's just people everywhere. Um, and they had state troopers searching uh, cars as they went below the, the 14th Street cutoff. You could still see the smoke coming from the towers also as you go by Chelsea Piers where they had a lot of the ambulances staged in case they needed rescue services. And uh, you know, what was it like seeing all the service vehicles and the TV crews? and? Yeah, I mean, just an incredible amount of authority. The uh, military, the state police, the city police, Secret Service, uh, DEA, FBI, all agencies were there uh, along with all the media as you'll see as we get closer to Ground Zero. And what was it uh, like seeing people in, in masks still? Well, you know, as the dump trucks came out of uh, the Ground Zero with the steel girders from the towers, you could smell sulfur in the air, and people were handing out water to the rescuers, and some of the rescue vehicles that were crushed in the attacks were brought out and escorted by military police as uh, people had clapped and sort of cheered for those people. Now, moving on to Washington Square Park, um, such a view of the Twin Towers that is no longer, what was it like seeing it in its present state? Well, Washington Square Park has long been a, a place where you could see the towers through the arch and people would go there and just enjoy the day. But now it's sort of become a memorial for the Twin Towers um, because they're missing from that arch view. And uh, there were a lot of flowers and candles, and there was even some people who had had posters on the cement there and were writing chalk drawings expressing their feelings and uh, their outrage in some cases for the events that took place that day. And the atmosphere was certainly somber. Yeah, it was definitely a somber mood, um, you know, very quiet, although there was all those people around you, um, just people mourning and not really knowing how to feel. Obviously, walking past any fire station, uh, there must have been some kind of, uh, you know, mood in the air. Yeah, absolutely. Um you know, every fire station had flowers in front of it, and you had average citizens that had helped out in the rescue efforts, uh, walking around with American flags, and you could see more of that as we got closer to Ground Zero. So now you're at Ground Zero, and what are your thoughts? You know, you could definitely tell that you were in the impact zone. You could see dust uh, lining all the buildings and all on the mailboxes. And you could still see what was left uh, standing of the Twin Towers as you look at the wreckage. With so much military presence, was it strange? Uh, yeah, I mean, even Wall Street had their uh, little message for bin Laden, but down in Battery Park, um, the military presence was just so overwhelming. It looked like a scene out of MASH. Uh, military tents, Humvees, and all kinds of personnel overlooking the Statue of Liberty there in downtown Manhattan. Definitely an odd scene. A 
a lot of the wreckage uh, was sort of what you had seen on TV during the time, but um, up close and personal, um, it, it's hard to really get the scale from the pictures, but in one of the pictures you could see there's a, a large dump truck on the street. It uh, gives you a sense of, of the whole fact that the buildings had just sort of collapsed right where they were. And World Trade Center 7, which was just next towards the towers, uh, also was completely burnt out. And even the retail stores and the banks that were occupied during the time of the attacks and everyone had to leave in a hurry, um, you could just tell that there was sort of people there and every life was interrupted. And what's a picture of this? Um, you know, those are pictures from the other side uh, around World Tra Trade Center 7. And uh, as we went around the other side, you could see there were supplies and signs for triage and rescue dogs in that area. Uh, City Hall was had their flags at half-staff, and the military was lined up to come in to do their job. You could see parts of the Twin Towers coming out from the rescue zone, and a lot of the city blocks were just completely fenced off. Business owners and residents uh, were not allowed to go home or to work. And in such an area that typically you'd see tens of thousands of people at any hour. Yeah, it was real eerie being uh, that empty. Um, but as you come around the other block, you can see now the pile, which is the pile of wreckage left from the towers. It stood about four or five stories high. And that's where all the media had congregated to do their newscasts from. That's certainly a shot that you uh, often saw over the years. And now you have moved above 14th Street. Right. The dividing line from where the city was closed and open to business as usual, so to say. Uh, just a mass of people, again, creating a memorial in the park there to remember the people who had lost that day and the rescuers we lost as well. And, you know, Manhattan being an area that always has a lot going on and visual stimuli just now you're seeing so many other visions um, what were your thoughts yeah you know normally you would see a street performer on the corner and and now there was some sort of either performance or um, you know prayer vigil going on in place of what used to be a street performance uh, just an incredible amount of outpouring of emotion and condolences from the people of New York City. As we go into night here, you know, it's certainly a day that uh, we'll never forget. And, um, you know, being 10 years now down the road, I, th I thought it'd be best to release these pictures to the public uh, and share them with the world. And 10 years later, your thoughts? You know, it feels like yesterday, and it's definitely a day that had changed the world. But hopefully, as we continue to remember it, it will help to continue to change the world.